Stranger Things has been to some wild places in the past couple of seasons, with characters dying and then somehow coming back from the dead. And now, in the much-anticipated Season 4, it seems like we're going to continue that theme as the latest character posters reveal it all. Stick around to find out what the poster could mean for Season 4. Let's dive in. First, blue and red is the theme for Season 4. With the first Stranger Things Season 4 character poster, we got a look at Eleven with her new buzz cut. And the theme for that? Green and red which showed her struggle between the Upside Down and a return to Hawkins National Laboratory. However, the fascinating thing about this poster was the fact that she was still in her Season 1 hospital gown, hinting at maybe a flashback sequence. But one of the trailers confirmed that our supernatural protagonist might actually be heading back to her past to regain her powers. What about the other characters, though? Well, it looks like things are a little different for them this time around as well. As part of the ongoing teasers, Netflix has finally dropped the character posters for Joyce, Murray, and Jim Hopper as well, all three of whom are on a separate quest in another part of the world. Unlike the Eleven poster, though, these characters have a blue and red theme going on, which shows their own predicament between the Upside Down and the dreadful Russian winter. So, without further ado, let's dissect them and see what's up. Next, Jim Hopper's Russian Trouble. If you haven't quite caught up with Season 3 yet, look away, because we're going to dive into some spoilers. Now, with that out of the way, remember how Jim Hopper kind of dies at the end of last season? Well, it looks like he's back from the dead. And guess what? He's in a Russian prison camp now. Yep, we're just as confused as you are, but from the looks of things, our favorite sheriff doesn't have a clue about what's going on either. However, later in the trailer, we see a badass version of Jim Hopper as he's locked and loaded, ready to obliterate a Demogorgon. And for the poster, we get this battle-ready version with the same red and blue surrounding him. Also, he's got a buzz cut now, just like Eleven, which, if we've learned anything from the previous seasons means that he's ready to kick some demon butt. There's no rest for Joyce in California. Meanwhile, back in California, Joyce Byers is still recovering from the events of Season 3 when she gets a parcel with Russian postage stamps. And surprise, surprise, it's a message from our trapped sheriff boy. So, with all the mom energy that she has, Joyce also gets locked and loaded and contacts an old friend to head to the cold Russian land and rescue Jim Hopper. Her poster which also has the same blue and red theme, has her donning a woolen beanie and a big jacket. So it definitely seems like her own little rescue mission for Hopper is underway. But who's she going with? Well, that's exactly what we're going to talk about next. And now, Murray is back. Of course, as soon as she gets the message from Hopper, there's only one person that she turns to for help, and that's Murray. The crazy conspiracy theorist returns to season four as he teams up with Joyce to fly all the way to Russia. So naturally, like very normal people, people in a normal town, they get a private jet and crash into the cold remote location. Now, you might be wondering, why didn't they just take a normal plane to Russia? Well, that's because the whole prison camp and the Upside Down project are super confidential, so chances are that the location is off the map, which is why a private jet is probably the only way to get there. As for the poster, the bald eagle Murray looks as intense as ever. Oh, and he also has the same red and blue theme going around him. One more detail that all three posters have, though, though, is the little watchtower underneath the characters. Now, we don't really know what the significance of this tower is, but it could just be there to denote the Russian prison camp as it's surrounded by the mountains. Could love bloom on the battlefield? This older gang has had its fair share of intense fighting in Stranger Things, both against the upside-down demons and humans. But this is the biggest challenge that they've faced yet as they're heading straight into the enemy territory. And as ready as they may be, it's still just the three of them against an entire prison camp. So it would be interesting to see how they navigate through that. On the other hand, though, we've seen a lot of mixed signals between Joyce and Hopper, who have definitely grown closer over the past seasons. And if we know anything about TV shows, the best way to ignite a romantic interest between two characters is to keep them apart for as long as possible. So, could this rescue mission end with Joyce and Hopper finally embracing their feelings for each other? Or is there more heartbreak in store for Will's mother? Thankfully, we don't have to wait much longer to find out as the season 4 premieres this month on May 27th. Enough about Stranger Things though, let's take a look at everything else that's happening in the world of entertainment. Sex Education star gets the 14th Doctor role. Doctor Who is one of the longest running shows on BBC and much of the longevity of the show is owed to its formula of going through different protagonists. And ever since it was announced that the 13th Doctor Jodie Whittaker would be leaving the show this year, the rumor mill has been all over 
over the place. However, we finally have official confirmation that the sex education star Nakuti Gatwa will be getting the keys to the TARDIS next year. Now, you may not know this, but Gatwa is actually already a pretty accomplished actor with multiple awards under his belt. And since the role of the Doctor is pretty flexible when it comes to gender and race, the 29-year-old seems like a great choice to bring a fresh new look to the series. Of course, the 13th Doctor was the first female to step into the role of the immortal Time Lord. And following that theme, Nakuti will be the first black actor to helm the British sci-fi show. Yes, we've had Joe Martin before as well, who has played the Fugitive Doctor in multiple episodes, but this is the first time that a black actor is playing the lead role. In the statement posted on the official Doctor Who website, the actor said that he was honored and beyond excited to play this incredibly iconic role. However, he did admit that it was also kind of scary for him, as Doctor Who means so much to so many people around the world. But the actor was adamant that he could bring a fresh new perspective to the role and give it his all. Sam Raimi wants to adapt a Stephen King novel. Fresh off the heels of Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness, it seems like director Sam Raimi has already set his sights on his next project. Speaking to the media while promoting his latest Marvel joint, he expressed his desire to work on one of the many brilliant Stephen King novels. When asked which story he'd like to make a movie about in particular, he mentioned The Shining, Carrie, and Night Shift. But of course, many of these, like The Shining, have already been adapted into a movie. So it would be interesting if Raimi decides to reinterpret these stories or if he goes for something that's completely untouched. One thing is certain, though, that the Spider-Man director has kind of made a reputation for himself as the go-to horror guy over the years. And his influence in the new Doctor Strange movie is also pretty evident, as not only is it the scariest Marvel movie yet, but it also goes into some pretty bizarre themes at times. So we're sure that whichever Stephen King novel he decides to have a go at next, it'll turn out great. Taika Waititi reveals more Jane Foster details in Thor Love and Thunder. Jane Foster hasn't made an appearance in the MCU for almost a decade, as the character parted ways with Thor after the Dark World. So seeing Natalie Portman's character return in the Thor Love and Thunder reveal was obviously pretty exciting. Not only that, but she's also worthy enough to carry the Mjolnir. And don't even get us started on those incredible strong arms of hers. However, one aspect that fans haven't really thought about is how her return would affect Thor, who's been busy with other stuff. Thankfully, Taika Waititi has all the answers for us. In an interview with Empire Magazine, the director revealed that it's been eight years, and both of them have had whole other lives. So, from the perspective of Thor, when you see the love of your life come back like that, it's obviously gonna mess you up. Of course, the fact that she's even wearing the Thor armor and wields the Mjolnir is even more confusing. But we won't have to wait much longer for her answers, as Thor Love and Thunder hits theaters on Friday, July 8th. That's a wrap for this video. Do you think that Jane Foster will permanently take the mantle of Thor after Love and Thunder? Let us know in the comments below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. See you in the next one.